how to give the historical perspective okay. as to when and why smoking is a danger. Uh, and uh, the substance is we should recall in Nigeria during the Renaissance, and animals indiscriminately sometimes even Yes, yeah. well, there is a link between malaria and the spread of the virus. Let me even start this to make it more clear. Just if you want to be so it applies to any man. Well, in practice, in Nigeria's epileptic power supply has been a problem for years, despite investing over $30 billion in the sector for the past 15 years. As a result, citizens and businesses have resorted to the use of electric generators. Niger State is hosting three mega electricity generating stations of the Federation, yet there is still a call for improved power supply. Laudable steps have been taken because there can never be economic development without power. What is the possible way out? Let's find out. You're watching Inside Niger. I am Emil Daisin. We have on our show today the Permanent Secretary Ministry of Works and Transport, Niger State, Architect Umar Obawa. You're welcome to our show. Thank you. Um, sir, the expansion of electricity supply um, is a major policy or program of the ministry. To what extent has it been achieved? Thank you very much. Um, just like you have mentioned, electricity plays a very important role in economic development of any state or nation. And so whenever or wherever you have electricity, we expect to see a kind of an improvement in the quality of life of the people, which by extension means that there's going to be a lot of activities around there. Part of the program of Niger State Government is to be able to provide electricity to the generality of the communities around. Um, this has been done uh, in so many ways. If you observed at the moment now, we are picking a good number of the communities and we are electrifying them. The essence is to ensure that there is improvement in their quality of life. I can give an example of a few of them. At the moment now, we are working on the Beji electrification. Beji is even a town not far away from Nina. And up to this moment, there is no electricity. When this government came in, it puts it as one of its priorities. And at the moment now, we are working on that place. But um, Niger State is hosting three mega electricity generating um, stations of the Federation, yet we, we still have that cry, that call for improved power supply. We, we expect that Niger State, we should even have more of the power supply because some communities are still expecting supply. Yeah, I would have even follow you to say the same except that electricity or power generation and distribution is under the exclusive list of the, uh, of the uh, Constitution, which means that uh, uh, everything about power is done by the federal government. And so some of the things we are even doing now, we are doing it as if it is for and on behalf of the federal government, because we felt that if we have to wait for the federal government to come in to do this, it may take a long time. So sometimes we carry out most of the functions of providing electricity to communities, provisions of transformers, which by extension is also a federal government uh, work. Mm -hmm. And then uh, maybe later we just ask for reimbursements where possible. 
Okay. Um, how has been your collaboration with the power holding company of Nigeria, the federal agencies, and independent um, power producers? And with the issue of this um, privatization, what what it won't it be a problem? No, I I don't believe it is a problem. Uh, what I see it is that Niger State on one part, and the companies on one part, and the generation on another part. As far as Niger State is concerned, we have worked assiduously with uh, the parties to ensure that there is better cooperation and collaboration. And we have uh, so many times been part of several meetings that will ensure the provision of services, especially electricity, by both the federal government and the state, and we are still doing the same. So as far as I'm concerned, um, it's the same thing. We will do our part, and then they will do their part. Okay. Um, recently, the Bank of Industry installed um, solar energy in Besanti community um, in Kacha, which was commissioned by the, the Niger State Governor, and is going to um, have a sharing formula and supply. What's going to be the extent of the coverage like? Yes, uh, Besanti, the electricity supply in Besanti is what we call the off-grid supply, okay. which means that it is not being supplied from the main grid line, which is being produced by uh, our generating plant. This one is a renewable energy program, which is using solely solar. Now, one of the reasons why that area was chosen is because of one, its potential to develop. Two, there, is, there are signs of economic activities okay. that if you give them electricity supply, it will enhance most of those activities. That is why it is choosing. And for the avoidance of doubt, if you use solar, it's a very simple uh, system. You use the solar panels to receive the sunlight. It converts it into electrical energy and then it is stored into a storage device. Now from the storage device, it is now connected to each of the houses and then they get electricity. Now, off-grid can be done to almost everywhere now. But at the moment, you know, because they observe the potential of Byzantine, that is why it was chosen to be able to do that kind okay, of From supply. your own assessment now, how, how is the place now? from the period when the supply was done and now do you think there's um, improvement in development or yeah what what uh, what we are doing is that we are observing it over a period of time you may not be able to from the period that we, we started providing electricity you may not see an immediate uh, improvement but certainly if i'm going to talk about improvement one at least uh, people that do not have light before now have light. Yes. That mm -hmm. is one improvement. Mm. Two, they, I'm sure certain people that may have to go out to go and give even their GSM phones to charge with somebody where they have to pay 50 naira, now they can be able to do it in their houses. Now by so doing, it will ensure that some of the money they have been using for other things can now be used for more things and which means that alone can enhance economic activity. Thank you. So how frequent do you go for project monitoring and evaluation? And what are your discoveries in the strategy to rectify some of the problems? Now, when you talk about project monitoring, you are talking about a large expanse. Yes. OK, in the aspect of um, power now. OK. Yes. Um, you see, let me give you an example. If there is a program, a government program, let me again give an example of Beji, which is the closest one. Okay. If there is already an approval to carry out that job, it is very important that whoever is given that job must do it to conform with the laid down specifications. To be able to do that, Ministry of Works will need to monitor 
routinely the activities of the contractor so that he conforms to the specifications. Now, you know, when you say monitoring, that is just one aspect to ensure that the work is done to specification. There's another aspect of monitoring which we are not talking about, which is the issue of maintenance. Because if you, may, if you monitor, it is then that you will know that there are one or two challenges here and there when it becomes operational. And if you are able to put it in order, if you are able to monitor properly, you will know the challenges early and it will be cost effective maintenance. But if you allow it you know, to degenerate, then you see there will be a lot of uh, costs uh, implications and then it will be more challenging. The last administration did mention that um, the country needed about 35,000 megawatts of electricity if Nigeria must attain a stable power um, supply in the country. So let's look at the project. This project that came up, the Hyperdeck project, can it actually improve the power supply? Because if, if we have this project now, it means that not just if we generate, we'll be having um, four mega electricity generating station. Okay, we, we are talking about two things. One, if we are talking about improved uh, generation, that is one part. The other part, so when you are talking about hyperdeck, you are talking about the issues of hydro areas and communities that, that are used to produce electricity, they need to be taken care of. That is what hyperdeck is saying. But certainly, with the uh, commencement of work at Zungeo, that is a confirmation that when that project is completed, there are two or three things that will happen. One, we will have a new generating plant there. Once we have a new generating plant, it means the megawatts will increase. Secondly, we will also have the opportunity to have dammed uh, what we call it, a dumped area, where people can be able to use part of the water around there. And three, which is also most importantly, is that just like I have said before, the provision of that dam around here, around there, will ultimately also improve the lives of the people around there. Because there are so many activities that have not been taking place there, and so economic life of the people will also improve. Okay. Um, let's look at the issue of vandalization of poles. How can this be stopped? And what are the plans to ensure that our poles are being maintained? Yes, um, we, we have uh, about uh, two issues pertaining to that one. The first one is, you know, late in the night, in the night you find people, you know, hoodlums, you know, removing a portion of the street lights. And then the second one is when people who are driving haywire just go to hit our poles. Uh, Ministry of Works, you know, have a program to ensure that we take care of those issues. One is that we talk to the communities around so that they own up to the street lights. Because if they own up to the street lights, at least we'll be solving one problem that if they see something happening to it, they will not allow it. Or even if they cannot do anything, they will be able to communicate to someone who can do something about it. Secondly, if we find anybody is part of what we do, if you hit our poles, you are automatically taken to the police, and you are first meant to pay for putting it right, and then we allow the law to take its course. At least with, with these two things, it is helping us to solve these issues of uh, challenges on the street lights. Okay. And uh, again, we are expecting that the state should have street lights everywhere, which we don't have in some parts of, the, of, the ro of our roads. What, what is the ministry doing about that? If you just go through MENA, you will observe that at the moment, what the ministry is doing is doing the routine maintenance. Now we have two types of street lights. 
we have the ones we call the conventional street lights that are connected to the power holding. And then we have the solar street lights that use the solar energy to provide the needed electricity. Now, the conventional ones, their maintenance is a little bit easier because you just check the, the setup and then maybe the bulbs, when they are bad, you just change them. But for the solar, you have different accessories. You have the solar panels, you have the bulbs, you have the batteries, you have other smaller accessories that controls the functions. And so those ones, we engage uh, people who will do that maintenance and on a routine basis. At the moment, we even have a retainership a company that carries out the maintenance of most of the solar street lights. Right now, as I'm talking to you, they are already doing the job. But like um, I will tell you, it is a slow process because you have to take one street light at a time. You need the panel to take you up to that level. You remove most of those things and then you put them back and then you move to the next one. That's how it is. But uh, Niger State Government is doing a lot in trying to ensure that we have all our street lights on, especially in the night, because the government is very particular about the security of the generality of the people. And, and then we also have an observation concerning um, the traffic light, the use of traffic light. The traffic light fluctuates as in today is on, tomorrow is not on, or as in because of malfunction mm -hmm. or so. Um, what, what is the ministry doing to, for us to have this sustained traffic light so that when people are driving on the road, they won't be assuming that maybe that one is faulty mm -hmm. because yesterday it wasn't working. Okay. So you don't do disobey the traffic rule, uh, exactly. traffic rules. And most people are impatient. No, that's true. <laughs> Uh, actually, you see, just like any other device, you know, uh, up for upgrades when the time comes. And I tell you, um, from the time this type of uh, traffic lights were installed, they need to be updated so that they will be in tune with the uh, realities of the day. Now, one challenge we have with this type of uh, traffic light that we have is that it's only a two-digit uh, traffic light, which means that if you are calculating that people will be staying for like, say, 120 seconds, you see, it will give you only 99, and then it will reverse back to again red, again one, until it's able to get up to 20, mm -hmm. so that it will now give you the 120. Um, what we did now is that because of the challenges we noticed it has, the government approved first the maintenance of these ones on the ground. That is ongoing. Now, but subsequently, the government has a plan to bring in the most current traffic lights that can take all the digits so that we will not have that type of challenge. You know, there are uh, monochromes and there are polychromes and all these things, you need to look at it very well so that you will not be having challenges. Don't forget that traffic lights, the way you see them, if, you s if there are four in a T-junction, all the four communicate with each other. Mm. That is why it is able to stop, you know, say three and allow one to go and then when that is going it will stop the other ones and allow if they do not communicate that is also another challenge so there are times when we have some routine reasons to be able to look at them because for some reasons either weather or what they will refuse to communicate and so we have to get the people to come and put it but in the near future you are going to get a brand new you know, uh, traffic lights that are a little bit different and they are in tune with the realities. Thank you, sir. What is the state government collaboration with Nigerian Railways Corporation to facilitate um, 
railway transportation synergy? Yeah, over the years, uh, you know, Niger State uh, played a very important role in the resumption of railway, you know, in, in Nigeria. I remember we have been, you know, attending various meetings with the Nigerian Railway Corporation, especially uh, when we were talking about what we call the MTTS, which is the Mass Transit Train Services. And you will recall some years back, uh, around 2010 or so, when um, uh, MINA to Kaduna commenced, and we were having it uh, on Mondays, Thursdays, and Sunday. That was also part of you know what Niger State fought for. But uh, over the years now, you will observe that uh, there has been a dr dramatic improvement on the issue of railways. Um, the federal government has done a lot in bringing back the Lagos to Kano, and I think Lagos to Portacourt, and then one other area, and that has enhanced, you know, movement within the country. Uh, don't forget also that uh, railway is also under the exclusive list. We can only partner with the federal government over that issue. But there's another interesting transportation that the Niger State government is trying to bring to Niger State, which is the concept of monorail. Uh, for those people who travel out of the country, you realize that we have uh, something near train services within the metropolis that it's also a train, but it looks more like a bus. Okay. Yeah. It's, it, it's, you know, when you talk about a train, you think about something that is on two tracks. Yes. A monorail is only on one track. And it's on a beam and column. And it's just like if you take this, our NSTA bus, and then you just put it on a beam, and then it starts moving on its, on its own. So it's more like a bus that looks like a train, and then it's able to move a little bit faster. It's, uh, it's, it links up uh, the town. It can carry more people. It will kind of enhance transportation within the metropolis. It will enhance economic activities. It will even make the town look good because uh, a number of people will love, you know, to use the monorail, and so they will be parking their vehicles if it passes from their residential area to the public area where they do their work. It saves them even fuel, and so it's by extension it does a lot of things. It will now. When you have reduced vehicles off the road, because people are now using the monorail, it means that there may likely be less accidents. Mm. And if there are less accidents, it means that you know our health sector will have less to do. And it means that by extension also the government will spend less of the health sector. It is a dream to every country to achieve energy independence and to have necessary infrastructure on a road for easy movement. It is a very big task, but it can be achieved. At the same time, on Inside Niger, I am Emil Dyson.